John here. Welcome to part 9 of my OpenSCAD tutorial. Today we're going to talk about uh, for loops and intersection for. So let me make the font a little bit bigger again here. Okay, so what is a for loop? Well, a for loop allows you to reuse some code. Let's do a simple one here and then we'll do some more examples where we apply them. There's a couple of different ways to express a for loop. Uh, one of them is simply give me a range of numbers from 1 to 10. Echo X. And run that and see what we get on the console. You can see it's going to it's going to create it's going to execute echo x 10 times and each time it does it x will have a different value ranged from 1 to 10 by 1. 1 is the the, the increment is implied when you leave it out when you have the three of them in there like this three parts this is an explicit increment by 1. You could easily increment by 2 and you would end up with 13579. Uh you notice we did not get a 10. It's because 9 plus 2 is 11. It would have done 10 if it had ended up at 10, but it stepped over it, so it skipped it. If I start at 0, it'll go to 10. 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. All right? So that's how the limits and in, in the ranges work in this notation here. You can also use an array notation, like 1, negative 20, 13. By putting an array in there, this will iterate three times, and x will have each of the, the each of those three values: one, negative twenty, and thirteen, like so. So those are the ways that you can uh, uh, express a for loop. They also can nest, just like they do in C and other languages, right? So you can have an x, and then you can have a y inside here if you really wanted to. Maybe y. Oops, y will iterate from one to three. We don't get too many iterations, right? And then we can say, give me x and y, run that. And you see the x, 1, negative 20, and 13 over here. There's the 1s, the negative 20s, and the 13s. And for each time x goes, y goes from 1 to 3, as you can see in these lines down here. So they nest. They do all the usual intuitive things. Just got to realize the, the different notations you can use to create these ranges of values. All right. So how might we use this? Let's say we have a module that I'm going to call a slot. And it'll have a width, and a length, and a height. This is going to be a thing that is a hull around two cylinders. Diameter equals W, H equals H. Now, this is an interesting phenomenon. This keyword, these are called keyword variables. When you say the, the D variable for the cylinder shall have the value from my variable called W, which comes from here. Now, I'm going to say the cylinder's H variable value will come from my variable called H, which comes from right there. This is perfectly reasonable and legal to do. Now I want to create two of these guys. I'll do a vector notation. Minus L over 2, L over 2. So now I can say translate x0, 0. <clears throat> now what does this mean? This will execute twice because there's two elements in that list. First time it will go to minus L over 2. And the second time it will go to L over 2. So what this L represents is the total length of this, this the, the, the hull. Of where the locations are, the centers of the two cylinders that, that sit in this hull. Alright, so let's create one. Let's make it 20 by 100 by 5. We should have a popsicle stick over there, all right? All right, let's see what's going on here. Let's put a pound sign in there in front of the cylinders, right? So obviously, these are the two cylinders that make up the, 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 the children objects within the hull, right? The hull is the shrink wrap type thing 
around the inside components, which in this case are two cylinders. The cylinders are located at minus L over 2. L is 100, so there's minus 50. And these are the centers of these cylinders, remember. Not, we're not talking about that point there. We're talking about the center of these cylinders. So the distance between the center of this cylinder to the center of the one over there will be the L value. Okay? And the H is the height. This thickness here comes from this 5 over there. So this should all make perfect sense. This is one nice way to use the for loop, especially if this object inside here is not a trivial little cylinder that you could just type in two of them really easily. Sometimes this gets very complicated, and you'd like to just iterate and move, move them around, or these might even change, for example, the diameters of the various cylinders. You can use the, the variable here or a nested set of for loops and multiple variables uh, wherever you want inside here. So this is just a simple uh, use of the for loop that has some value. Now, just for fun, let's go ahead and look at the difference here of two slots. All right. So if I take uh, 15, if I take a 20, this is the width of the slot. All right, which is the diameter of the cylinder here on the ends, and then there's a 15. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a big one and take a little one out of the inside of it. Now you can see that when you take the exact same size thing out of it in a difference, you end up with a zero thickness little skin on here that doesn't render very well in a preview, but that's okay because it's just a preview. If you do a full rendering, you'll notice it takes it took an entire second to render it correctly and to remove those little skins because they have no volume. Uh, this took an entire second just to do this one little thing. If you had a complex shape with hundreds of these in them or something, you'd be looking at a lot more time to render this object. So that's why we can tolerate to some extent this little noisy image in the low quality preview. All right, so why did I do this? I did this to exemplify something. If you wanted to use a for loop in here, you might have a problem because this for loop it, Remember how a difference works. A difference says take the first object, first child object, and subtract all the other children from it to come up with the result. If I put a for loop in here like this, maybe I'll put a 20 and a 15, and then I said slot Z, I'll comment this one out. You might think, okay, I now have a, uh, these multiple slots. It'll take the first one and subtract the second one from it. No, it won't. The reason for that is the for uh, loop object is the first child of the difference. So what we now are asking it to do is take the difference between a first child, which happens to have some sub you know grandchildren objects in here but the difference doesn't care about that it takes the for loop minus nothing there's nothing to subtract here so this is not quite what you really want to do if you're going to do a difference like this all right there might be another use for it in a difference down here now we have the uh, oops i should have saved the other one ah. Now we have a slot, is a first child, and now we can subtract other children from the first one. So let's say, um, make it x, uh, we want to go from minus um, 50, uh, oops, and then we're going to increment by 20 until we get to positive 50, all right? and maybe we'll subtract a cylinder. Just stick any old height, height in there. Oops. Oops, what did I do wrong? Oop. Well, they're all in the same spot. I never used the x variable here for anything useful. <laughs> Now, 
I will subtract a cylinder that is at minus 50 from this from this slot, and then I'll subtract one that's at uh, minus 30, and so on. So I'll end up with a, a row of holes that looks like this. All right. So you can still use a for loop in a difference like this, but be careful if you try to make it the first child object because it will represent all of these items as the thing that is has to subsequently be subtracted from. All right. Now they have a special form of an intersection that has a, a for loop. The same kind of thing happens in an intersection, but it, there's there's a, it, it turns out that they they provide you a, a nice way out of it. So intersection. Oops. Four is how it works. Let's say we say, I don't know, n equals. Actually, this is a, I think this is an example in there in the OpenSCAD website. They do something along the lines of this. Let's get this slot stuff out of the way. What do they do in here? They say, um, I think they say translate so we go up 10 in the X and nothing there and we take that and we rotate it based on say n times 60 I think this is actually I think an example right out of the open SCAD site and then we put a let's put a sphere in there of um, I don't know 20 or something like that what is this guy gonna do alright so we get this football looking thing why in the world what's going on here right let's say we comment out or let's just put a uh, I don't want to think about this what I've got here is n goes from 1 to 6 and uh, I multiply that by 60. I guess it would have been a better idea to go like this. Uh, let's go from 0 to... This is, I think, more illustrative. I'm going to put n in here. This is what it's really doing. Start from 0, increment by 60 until you get to 360 degrees. So each one of these represents one angle of rotation of this object down here. I'm going to put a bang right here to see what these things look like. All right, There's one sphere. Now remember what the bang does. It says show me one and only one object and ignore all the rest of the code. And the object it will show starts after the bang and ends at the end of the statement. So notice I actually put it right in the middle of this statement. So what is this really saying? It says, show me a sphere that's translated to the right on x by 10, whose radius is 20. And that's exactly what we've got here, OK? So you can see where that sphere is. And it didn't do all, uh, however many that turns out to be, all eight of them or six of them. Uh, because it only does one and only one. It does the first one that the program comes to when you use the exclamation point thing like that. All right. So what's going on here? If I've got a sphere sitting over here to the right and I rotate it, remember the right-hand rule says put one sphere here. When it comes around this loop another time, it'll put one up here by 60 degrees. So it'll put one to the right, then it'll put one up here, then it'll put one up there, and so on in all these different uh, uh, angles uh, defined by this series of numbers up here, right? The, this set of angles. So if I put a uh, hashtag on there, now we can actually see all the spheres as well as the result inside there. You can see the little football thing inside, right? And you can see all the different spheres all highlighted one at a time. So the intersection four is specifically to allow you to have an intersection with a for loop in it because there's no way to use a regular for loop to create all these items. And it does come in handy from time to time. So they actually give you a very special for loop that's a combination of a for loop and an intersection together such that all the children objects can be uh, treated independently so that you can get an intersection like this. All right? So that's kind of a handy little thing to have, especially if you need to create 
some sort of a seed pod or a football looking thing. <laughs>